Hey, welcome to the Trep and Stone Podcast, the podcast where two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. I nailed that one. That was really good. Yeah, not like last week. Mm-mm. I'm not from Fargo, North Dakota, or Wisconsin this week. No, just general Americana. <laughs> I actually, I don't know if that's better. <laughs> now that I think yeah. about it. Yeah. Man, I've been listening to some new-ish music to me lately. Okay. Uh, and that's, I've been really getting into uh, New Wave. New Wave. Yeah, there's a really cool station on uh, Amazon Music, because mm-hmm. that's that's the uh, music um, subscription I subscribe to. There you go. And there's a station called New Wave. Yep. And uh, Carol hates it. Oh, bummer. Yeah, well, that's okay. Uh, I listen to it. Anyway, not around or just nah. I'll put it on when she's around. There you go. <laughs> yeah, um, and I, I'm really digging that station, man. Cool. There's something about that like mid or early to mid '80s like synth pop that I'm like for some reason it's just like checking all the boxes. Feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. You're vibing. I, I am. And like when you when you have like a good pair of headphones and you hear like I wear my sunglasses at night or yep. whatever the song's actually called. Is oh. that what the song's called? I like it. Yeah. I mean, if, it, if we're talking about the same song, Corey Hart, I Car- wear my yeah, yeah, sunglasses. Like yeah. the the beginning of that, like the dun 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 dun, dun, dun like synthesizer. Yeah, it goes back and forth between uh, the left and right. Man, I don't know. Just it's doing it for me right now. Man, own it. Yeah, you know, I'm wearing it out. There you go. Yeah, I don't know why. Don't OD on it. I won't <laughs> take it too far, but you know, I, I'll try not to. I mean, I'm not saying like it's on repeat. I mean, I, I kind of do that myself. You, you know? just like. Wear it out till I ruin it. (laughs) Can't ever listen to it again. (laughs) No, that's not usually my mo. Yeah, yeah. Usually it's like I like this thing. Yep. And um, I'm listening to it. Cool. Me, me, and the kids went to a concert the other day. Oh, a new wave concert? No, we went went to uh, what kind of? No, we went to uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire and Lionel Richie. What? (laughs) Yeah, that's an eclectic. Earth, Wind, and Fire opened. Yeah. Well, not really. Like, I mean. They're they're pretty damn similar. No, I I know. They're I mean, like the same, but like that's a, that's an interesting mix. That's a good concert though. Yeah. Um, where, where where was that? Uh, Tampa. Oh, at the, okay. At the Amelie. Oh, Amelie. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Packed. Pretty darn packed. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I think this was like Lionel Richie's first concert that he's done in in quite a while. Yeah. Just with with I think COVID and, and his other obligations. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was packed with old people. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess that's what I mean. Like by an eclectic mix because I mean, they're from the same era, not, not, not the, the bands, but like the, I guess the crowd that it's going to go to that. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think Lionel Richie because of American Idol and stuff like that has, Oh, I forgot. Reach. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it was, it was packed. Yeah. And Earth, Wind, and Fire is having a bit of a moment now with like. Really? Well, like, uh, there, you know, there's the Guardians ride at, at Epcot. Yeah. And they feature September oh. on that. And that's like everybody's mission is to ride that ride with September because it just slaps so well. Yeah. Uh, so it's like a thing. I, I love how those like things that for me as a kid, like that version of music or in even in the case of like new wave right. it was like just not in my purview sure and I, maybe it's cuz it wasn't really in my parents purview mm-hmm. um but something about like discovering the old thing that is new to you or like you had on the periphery right. and like <clears throat> oh actually i really like that thing right i just or, like, wasn't exposed to it in the right yeah, way or like that that thing is really cool. i mean you had that same kind of thing with um stevie nicks fleetwood mac that, for sure yeah yeah fleetwood mac i yep. mean that that same of like oh, yeah, hated it, and, now, oh, and then this is actually freaking love it now. Yeah, it's actually pretty good stuff. Yeah, which I think I think that's cool that especially we live in a a period now where it's more acceptable to do that. Right. Where like I feel like you know early two thousands it was all about like what's new, what's new, what's new, what's new. Right. Whereas now it's like oh we like new things and um, old things are cool too. Yeah, and and I think there's so much more sampling exactly. and blending yep. of things where like it's just easier to be introduced into things. Yes, yeah. really on good accident. point. And because of like TikTok and Instagram and stuff, like <laughs> sure. the way that they that creators will blend songs together. Right. It's not. It's not anymore. It's not. I've got to be introduced to this from the radio. Yeah. Right. Like some some guy could just blend two songs together that works sure. really well. Like I can't really hear at this point. Staying alive, the beginning of staying alive anymore without having. 50 cent <laughs> it's my birthday yeah. be what i the, expect to in come the club, in the club or yeah. whatever it is yeah yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah i've heard that so many times on Dude, on social media that like that's, that's like, what i expect those are, now those things are great yeah where it's like it's a uh the good version of do they blend right like you you, you know you'll have um 
like the and it becomes do, a viral thing sure. and everybody's using it like like a, obviously a popular version of it's like the the Dua Lipa song with Elton John and like that you know that kind of just mix of these two ideas and these two you know dramatically different people and the thing works right you, you have songs that work yeah yeah it's cool yeah, yeah. super cool uh, speaking of things that work yep uh, can we drink something yeah why are you you hesitated what was that hesitation I was trying to get your your path Speaking of things that work, yeah, it's a segue. Like, like whiskey <laughs> works. Yeah, that that was my that. Uh, that why are you? It, nah, I like it's it. It's a segue. Totally work. Yeah, it doesn't, the segue yeah. doesn't have to actually. I'm on work. that segue, man. The segue doesn't have to work. I'm, have you ever been on a segue? No, nah, it's I never have. terrifying. Is it? No, nah, I've never been on one. Okay, yeah, but like <laughs> I, I perceive it, it is terrifying. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that works. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got a bottle for us. Okay, good. Um, what you speaking got? of things that work. <laughs> <laughs> this bottle is the most expensive bottle what? I've ever spent money on. No. Yeah. This bottle is the most you've ever paid for a bottle of whiskey. This one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not gonna You've got Blanton's gold up there, bud. Yeah, I found that in Europe at, at cost. Oh. I mean I got this at cost also. I'll take this out, but what was that cost? Shit. Yeah. That's now I'm kinda scared. Like what if it sucks? <laughs> um that's part of the game. I almost didn't want to know that. Now that I know that, I, I don't know if I wanted to know that. Fair enough. What is it? <laughs> this is the Joseph Magnus okay. Cigar Blend. Bourbon. We've had we've had a Joseph Magnus before, right? Yep. With the <clears throat> just regular Joseph Magnus. Oh, okay. This is the what? What was that again? This is the Cigar Blend. Cigar Blend. You yeah. Say. It has quite the reputation of um, it, it's a hard sought off after hard sought after bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, that I was able to procure from a a, a whiskey, you know, an, an alcohol from a company. Yeah. Oh, the the program we've mentioned the program before. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're in the know, it's the the right. Yeah. You 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 buy a lot of stuff from this place, <laughs> and they give you a bunch of points. And when you get enough points, you you're able to get access into their safe uh, <laughs> and like get how, things out of. It. I like how you did that. <laughs> this was what I got out of the safe. Nice. We're gonna do it. I'm excited. I'm also worried. Excited. <laughs> Well, this, I mean, is this a fresh crack? It is a fresh crack. Yeah, wow. I, haven't, I haven't, I haven't had anything out of it yet. But I keep looking at it up there on the shelf of like, I really want to know what that tastes like. I want to know what it tastes so, like too. So this, this is a, this is a good time. We haven't recorded here in a while. I don't know if we've recorded here since I've had it. Maybe, no, we, maybe we did. No, we. No, that's not true. We did um, the batch and bottle here. Yeah. Oh, getting out of the the, the knife snaps. I'll, I'll definitely have this bottle for a while. Sure. So. I want, to, I want clean, it to look nice. Clean cut. Got it. Got it. Ooh, buddy. You got any bottle words for me before we dip into this thing? Bottle words, you uh, say. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, like that that bottle is, it reminds me of a, the Sazerac rye bottle. It's like a fat bottom Sazerac rye bottle. Yeah, a little bit. And which, I mean, just just in, in currently in that, that pour, I realized that a, a longer neck really does like make the possibility of overspilling or something like that less of an issue yeah it mitigates it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so that was kind of nice uh-huh bottle <laughs> words unless you're talking about that willet bottle that uh yeah that one's just that bottle bizarre still bottles just weird because the problem with that well never mind that's not here near there <laughs> there are bottle words they're, they're making it difficult to read though because the what, what i could see <clears throat> when i poured the bottle words are this like almost the same color as yeah, the label they're, they're, their color palette is minimal <laughs> to say the least it's muted af um just basic stuff. This is a straight bourbon whiskey. Okay. Finished in Armagnac, Sherry, and Cognac casks. Interesting. Armagnac, Sherry, and Cognac. Yeah. Wow. Uh, all right. Let's see what I can make out here. Uh-huh. Uh, maybe maybe let's wait till after we taste it, and we'll come back to it, because it looks like it's tasting notes. Okay. Uh, but this is batch 108 for those keeping score. Bottle 313. It says it was that, that Joseph Magnus was, no, was originally established in 1892 re-established in 2015. Wow. What uh, what proof you got there, bud? This is 57.55. One for 115.1. I think, yeah. Can I read you some words then? Yeah, read them up. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Batch 108 is entitled The Great Pumpkin. Charlie Brown, you say? Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of rem- reminiscent of the uh, Booker's in the uh, the casket, mm-hmm. where like each batch has like a different name, right? Yeah, one fifteen point one proof. This batch fits the bill as a quintessential autumnal cigar blend. Perfect. Oh, it also has a uh, t- 
pacing notes, which I don't want to read. Maybe maybe that's in in the thing that I <laughs> okay. I, I didn't read. Okay, but then then we'll, I, I won't read the rest. We'll have you read it. But uh, the Great Pumpkin, it says that's cool. Yeah, I was looking for a mash bill, and um, I haven't found one. I mean, it is a blend of Indiana and Kentucky. Oh, urban. okay. That, I was just going to ask you, like Joseph Magnus, are they sourcing? Because that like. That's not a distillery. That's just a company, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I think so. I think they're just bottlers. Yeah. I think they're just independent, independent bottle. bottlers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Man, that thing is... Uh, well, it's funny that, that it's called the Great Pumpkin because I feel like there is like an orange tint. So <laughs> there's a there's a pillow over here that has uh, <laughs> Charlie Brown on it. Ironically. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm just, I'm looking at it through the pillow and the pillow is orange because yeah. it's, it's uh, Halloween related. But, but, I, yeah. but I see it. It's, a, it's orange. In general, yeah. 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 Got a little, little more of an amber tint yeah. to it. On the nose. It's bourbon. It's dark. It's leathery. Yep. Caramel that's just gone a little too far. Yep. There's there's a little bit of like twingy, like twangy notes right. on the, on that sugar. Right. There's some grapey notes. Yeah. Why, why do they it's call not, it a cigar blend? Because it goes well with cigars? I feel like they, they blend this specifically to cut through a cigar. Okay. That makes I sense. I think that's most like that, that's becoming a bit of a thing now is the cigar blend. Sure. Uh, that, that. Um, there's a few different popular variations. Yeah, some right scotches now. are doing that too. And I think that's the point of it is to it's it's meant to be paired. Gotcha with a cigar. And I, I can get that because like it, just the the um, sweet notes kind of I feel like would cut through like the heaviness of a cigar. Right. There's there's an undertone of like that kind of like sherry sweetness, that dark red. Yep. Kind of poking through, but there is like a wine nature. Yeah, I was gonna to say it. like not. Raisiny notes like a cognac, but like fermented grape, right? Like not dried grape, but like this, this grape's a little sour, right. if you will. Yeah, no, I get that for sure. It's a little bitey though, too. Agreed, like not peppery, like a, like a sharpness. Mm. Maybe that's the proof. Yeah, could be for sure. All right, you know what they say in our parts of the world? What do they say? They say enough sniff in time for sipping. Agreed. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to need a second alone. That's rich. Rich is the the correct word here. I feel like there's a lot going on. Not in a roller coaster way, but in like a like a, a very complex novel way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot to work your way through here. Yeah. It's like it's like watching one of those shows that they've got seven different storylines that you're following. Yeah. And yeah, you're just yeah. waiting to see where they all come together. Whoa. <clears throat> Man complex doesn't begin to describe it <laughs> yeah like i mean I'm, I'm literally trying to think of something that i could say it's similar to but like nothing's jumping in my mind it reminds me of high west campfire without the peat and, and what i mean by that is that there are distinct levels on the palette that that goes through and and i'm on the record of saying like the the newer versions of campfire i don't like as much as the older versions mm. it as it washes over the palette the the liquid changes dramatically yeah, to like me. several times. E- easily. I feel like if I if I took a pen and paper right now and like started writing down, oh yeah, I get that. I get that. I get that. I get that. I'd, I'd come up with 20 different descriptors. Yeah, and I'm I'm interested. Like I, I want to sit with it for a minute, but in the past when I've had whiskeys like that, it's almost like holy crap, like there's just there's so much going on here. Right. But there's this like really nice like rounded warming quality that I'm digging, man. Like it, it reminds me of it's a little crisp outside. Yeah. I need to, to make a fire, but like, I don't need to sit by the fire. Like it's not that cold. Right. But like, I want it for aesthetic purposes. Yeah. I'm going back to like that, that thing that you discovered of like the great pumpkin, the the perfect fall. Mm-hmm. That's accurate. It is. And and I don't know, like, see, like I'm getting like a touch of like maple. Yeah. Which is making me think of fall. I'm yep. getting like, yeah. Like and this is tastes it, like is that, autumn. Is that like now just in, implanted Maybe. and like, I'm doing that now? <laughs> It reminds me kind of of the 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 maple syrup uh, donuts in Vermont, or like that maple syrup ice cream or ma- maple oh, like uh, the creamy, the, yeah, the maple yeah, yeah. Creamies. And it's like, man, it, it's almost like taking me right back to like September in Vermont. I know, man, which is a dangerous thing. Oh, buddy, you know we've been invited to um, Kentucky in October. Yeah, we did. I'm I'm thinking like in terms of like the sherry quality, totally there. Absolutely, it, it is actually kind of reminding me of the Abenad. Uh, oh, of the sherry bomb kind of notes. Yeah, like, yeah, It yeah, does yeah. have that sherry quality to it right off the bat. Yep. And then that kind of goes away, and then this mapley, syrupy sweetness comes through mid-palate. Yep. And the finish is fantastic because I, I feel like that proof, I didn't realize the proof was so 
high. That proof is like the right proof. It is the right proof. But like, oddly enough, I, I don't feel like it's drinking like a 150. I was just going to say that. Like, and that's, that's what I mean. Like that proof is spot on because a 115 can, can kick. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Like I'm, I was, you know, it, it, to me, it drinks more like around a hundred. Agreed. Except for my chest. My chest <laughs> telling me otherwise <clears throat> right now. Mm-hmm. But it's the, the proof offsets the, the sweet. Yeah. Man, I, I feel like I've said it before, so I want to go back now and like <laughs> look at what we've drank to figure out, see if I can figure out what I said it about. But there's something about it where it's like all the notes, there's there's very few subtle notes. Yeah. Everything is loud and proud. Sure. And it's like the crescendo. Everything's just boom. What did we say that about? About like everything's just singing at a 10. Dialed up. But it's like as a chorus. So right. it all works together. Like but nothing's you, you overpowering. Out, you can pick out else, each yeah. one exactly. Yeah, but it's like here's there's here's a tenor, that there's a bass. Yeah, yeah there's, there's that. oh the sopranos. You guys are back. I'll tell the sopranos. Yeah. Hey, good, good for you yeah. guys. Like it, it's it's impressive in that mm-hmm. way that nothing nothing pokes out. There's no solo. It's just a beautiful harmony. You know, you saying that I it was I know, a I know scotch, I, but I, said I don't that remember about something. I don't remember what scotch it was. It might have been the Abenad. But maybe that's just because we've talked about the Abenad. But it it was a scotch for sure. Man, I'm so pleased about like this whole fall nature of it. Mm-hmm. Because I've thought about that. Like I, I've got winter whiskeys. I've got summer whiskeys. But I didn't feel like necessarily like fall was something that like specifically spoke to me. Yeah. Gosh dang. This that, totally does That's occupying that spot. Yeah. Man. To me, it's that warming quality. It's yes. that like yeah. there's there's like you get sweet. Um, it's not like saccharin like overly sweet it's a dark right, brooding yeah. sweet it's warming uh maybe some clove going on something that's just like a little bit of peppery but like not you know not like oh ooh, pepper it's just all around yeah there's there's great. vanilla yeah. there's there's a little bit of like sugar cookie a little bit of on the on the back end there's there's definitely like some some barrel yep a little, little bit of char yeah mmm Okay. Toasted coconut. Oh. We bleeped out the uh we we beeped out the cost. <laughs> yeah. I think it I think it's worth the cost. Yeah. I mean like that's that that's that, tough. that's hard to not that's say tough. that like that, that it's not worth it. And it's not something I'd I'd be like, Yeah, no, every every one I see I'm gonna buy. No. But it would definitely be like if I see it again, I'd be like, How much is it? <laughs> right. That that's a good point. Like, is this something Knowing the cost of it, and um, can, can we just, we'll, we'll say this, the cost is north of 100. Yeah. So this is a bottle that y- y- you might need to pause, the average person, if you will, might need to pause and like, do I want to do that? Right. And Am this, I ready for it? Correct. Two. Right. This, you know. this batch 108, I think is great. I can't say anything about the other batches. Right. But it is that like, huh, if I found that again, yeah, would I want to do it? Yeah. Now that I've had it. Like, I mean, to me, to me, it's like a, it's a bottle of, certainly it's a special occasion bottle. Sure. But do I have a, do I have a, the appropriate reason for it other than just like, I'm not going to buy this once a week. Yeah. Kill yeah. it and then go buy another it, one. And this isn't your. You're not going to be able to find it's it. It's not an everyday anyway. sipper. Right. It's not an everyday sipper. It might even be one of those bottles where like, oh, you got a, a Joseph Banga cigar blend. I do. <laughs> Can I have a pour? Have you tried <laughs> Speckle Tail? <laughs> yeah. Have you tried the wood for Double Oak? Yeah. A lot of interesting things there too. Good th- you Maybe know, you should try that one. Uh, how how about uh, Jack Daniel Single Barrel Bell Proof? Yeah. That's that's a Dreppin Stone staple. Yeah. Have absolutely. you tried that? Give that one a shot. Yeah. There's probably uh, like six old granddad bottles up here somewhere. I'm probably try that too. Now, if you'll notice, sir, that that Magnus is on the top shelf. Um, <laughs> okay. It's, that's club level. We we we, we just you don't have that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We just are you a Dreppin' Stone Patreon? There, oh. that's it. Oh, you're not. You, well, you can sign up really quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's really simple. In fact, I'll give you a pour right now. Just yeah, absolutely. I'll go and get the Glen Karen ready. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, no, it, it's one of those that like I don't think I'd want it all the time. Oh yeah, no, like, it's, not, it's not, really rich. Not even like price, you know, considered. It's just it's bold. Yeah. It's really bold. It's really rich. I'm willing to think that over the course of this bottle, each pour you have out of it, you're going to be thinking about something else. Sure. You know, you're going to be thinking about, man, the that, that coconut note really came through at the end yeah, of that. Yeah. Or the next time, it's like, man, so much chocolate. I mean, it's just, I think it's going to change 
each time I have it. Agreed. I know it's it's not going to be a bottle that I finish rapidly. And that's I'm looking forward to that. Like for you, just of like, what is this bottle experience? Yeah, and it might be something like worth writing down of like when you have the next right, time of yeah. like these are the predominant notes. And so when you come back to it, what are the predominant notes every time you come back to it? Right. Cause like to parse out everything, like you're going to be writing a novel. So totally. just like, what do you, what, what are the three notes you get out of it? Boom, chocolate covered orange, coconut, and then leather, you know, or something like that. Yep. Cause I get all those three things in the best way. Dusty hay barrels on that one. <laughs> Ugh. Mm. Um, do me a favor. Yep. Read those bottle words for me. All right. So this is Nancy Fraley's, Cigar blend assumes bold, rich aromas Ooh. of tobacco, spice, okay. leather, vanilla, blanched almonds, and toffee. Wow. Blanched almonds and toffee. The Armagnac cask finish lends fruity notes of fig, prune, and dried apricot. Okay. To lovers of life everywhere, enjoy with your favorite cigar, <laughs> dark chocolate, and good friends. All right. There you go. You want what uh, what they say right. from their the website? Sure. This batch fits the bill as the quintessential autumnal cigar blend with warming notes of pumpkin pie, aromatic pipe tobacco, and plum pudding chock full of raisins, black currants, and candied orange peels. Black currants is a good one. Yep. I definitely get that. The palate completes the autumn flavors with tongue-tingling notes of brown sugar cookies sprinkled with cinnamon, canned peaches in heavy syrup, and apple strudel with pecan ice cream. Damn. The finish is long with lingering notes of caramel chews, pumpkin cheesecake, and toasted walnuts. The perfect cigar blend to warm the bones on a chilly fall evening. Man. When was this one released, does it say? Uh, I do not have that information. Mm. But I will say, from what I can tell, they're on um, batch 111 right now. Like, that's the most recent batch. So... Oh, man. This, this makes me jealous of Master Blenders and how fucking amazing that job must be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we've, we've spoken with uh, a Master Blender. Indeed. And uh, he's attested to that. You're right. This is an experience. Like if, if I had to sum up what this is, yep. it's an experience. Yeah, it's an experience bottle. And honestly, like it's 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 paying off in exactly how you hope it will when when you when you do that kind of a bottle. Can I tell you I was worried? I mean, obviously you could you could see the trepidation. And I, I didn't I didn't buy this bottle. <laughs> I mean, uh, the reputation for me that uh-huh. this bottle had, uh, when I saw that it was um available to get it was my first choice. Rightly uh, so. And and when when I got it, I was like, holy crap, I got it. And there is certainly that that understanding of like, man, you just paid that for a bottle of whiskey uh-huh. that you can also pay twenty five dollars for. Just and, so I can beep it out and get a great whiskey. Just so I can beep it out again. How much was it? Yeah. Um <laughs> so there there absolutely has to be that kind of understanding of Man, I could have gotten eight bottles for what I paid for that. Yeah, for everybody out there doing math. So certainly there was some um, some worry because I, I I'll be I'll be totally honest. I, I the the other Joseph Magnus mm-hmm. that we had, um, paid a, paid a good bit for that one. Sure, that one was a hundred. Yeah, um, and it was not memorable to me. Sure, me neither. Yeah. So and like you know, there, there's also that. But it's just the reputation that the cigar blend has, correct? Um, that made that to me worthwhile, Absolutely. worth worth going after. Well, it, it reminds me of, and we've already mentioned it um, previously. It reminds me of the the Booker's, like some of those blends and and some of those bottles are just incredible. Some of them a little less so, maybe. Right. But overall, people like. Okay, this is something you need to experience. If if you are a a whiskey enthusiast, if you are a fellow whiskey nerd, you need to experience this bottle. Right. That and I think it it, it also reminds me too of like it's similar to age statements to me. Mm-hmm. A, a ten year Scotch is going to taste completely different from that same brand's fifteen year sure. or eighteen year sure. or twenty two. You, you year. hope anyway. I mean, generally that's the case, but you hope. Well, I mean, I haven't run into a situation where it was like, no, that's that's definitely the same, exactly same, same thing. Like right. any, any any time I've ever experienced that, yeah, they no, they are quite different because either they're aging it differently, sure, or 
uh, there, there's something different going on. Well, I guess the other end hope too is that as the age progresses, the price is going to progress along with it, sure. and that the enjoyment progresses too. Right. And sometimes that's the case. Sometimes it's not the case. Right. Uh, in this case, I think the price matches the experience. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that's what that's what I was kind of getting out of. You might be paying more for that extra age statement. Right. But in most cases, it pays off for it. Sure. And so for this to be knowing that it's a that's an, an independent bottler, knowing that it's a blend, if you're gonna put that price tag on it, for me, I've got to think. And and just the reputation that I've had that I've seen every other, anybody that's ever had it always says that's the one. Right. Yeah. I was willing to do it. And yeah. It was right. Absolutely. You were right and fantastic model. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. Uh justified and go. All right, Kyle. Nick. Now that we've got honestly an impressive bottle. Yeah. What do you want to talk about this week? I was I was doing a bit of reading the other day and uh I'm reading I'm reading this book right now. I've been reading it for a while and I just uh, every once in a while I get up, you know, hair at my button. I'll read a couple of chapters. <laughs> the the point of the book is talking about social media and mm-hmm. just kind of those that that um aggressive nothing's going to stop us from making the money kind of aspect that that all those social media companies went through. I was reading one passage that brought up this thing that I wasn't aware of at the time uh-huh. uh called the Dunbar effect. Dunbar effect. Yeah. Okay. And the Dunbar effect is essentially an understanding that more or less and this happens all across nature of societal groups get to a point of about 150 relationships mm. that it becomes hard for any group to reach past that. Yeah. I guess other than insects. But <laughs> because I'm pretty <laughs> sure the ant hill out in my front yard, there's probably like 2,000 of them. Um, <laughs> Conservatively. <laughs> yeah. But uh, for, for most species, that tends to be the, the limit of... Uh, their social group, meaningful interaction. Yes. Okay. Uh, of that's the kind of the limit. And I was like, wow, that that's really interesting that that they they could pinpoint that. And um, the the book was was specifically talking about Facebook. And in the early days of Facebook, that became the general take was that most people using the 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 media would get to that number of friends, quote right. unquote, connections through the app or through the, through the social media platform. And then they would stop and that was just kind of it. And there was this wall mm-hmm. that, that Facebook was uh, put up against of like, how do we break through this? You know, spoiler alert, they did. <laughs> they eventually figured out clearly how to break through that and, and get to the point where people were. And they did that through like, Hey, you know, this person, you probably met this person. You may yeah. not be good friends, but you probably know them. Is that, is that like the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of thing? Kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> like you don't, you don't really know this person. You were at but... this person's bat mitzvah who was at your second cousin's right. wedding, but um, this so we're gonna other suggest, guy. Correct. We're going to suggest this to you and, and you're both going to get a, a, a dopamine kick because like you made a connection on Facebook. Right. And it, and Even it though you numbers. met this person for like five Even minutes, 20 years not, ago. Like friend could never absolutely like apply to what, what you guys are <laughs> right and so but anyway i just i thought that was an interesting thing like the book goes into kind of some detail about how primates um True. out in, in in nature like if they are are just kind of existing that's where they find their sweet spot is about 150 members in their troop right and in any time in captivity that they've tried to go beyond that limit their society basically just breaks down yeah everything becomes way too aggressive and they lose their their structure. Yeah. And I just thought that was a really interesting thing of 150 people. Like is that is that legit? Do you feel like that's accurate? Like where do you find yourself in that? Oh man. So I first heard about this um and it's a little muddy in my memory uh, because at, at some point maybe 5 or 6 years ago I was reading a lot of like business kind of books like like Malcolm Gladwell, like Outliers and uh, The Tipping Point, things like that, which are not like heavily rooted in science, but just kind of like cultural science, if you will. Sure. And then someone that I really like, I like his ideas, I like his kind of business philosophy is a, a guy named uh, Simon Sinek. Okay. And um, so where I f- first heard about this is a little muddy, but it's it's from one of those two people. Right. And this idea, this kind of the, the genesis of it being 
also like within military groups. And and I'm not super well versed on like is a battalion bigger than a platoon is bigger than you know a uh, regiment. Reg- I I don't know what that is, sure. but like the the lower number is about 150. Right. Um. That that groups within business tend to work way better if you have smaller. So like 150. Right. Or you know you can form meaningful relationships business wise with about 150 people. Right. And then every everyone outside of that periphery is you know, um, acquaintance, acquaintances. Exactly. And for me, like it makes sense. Like when I really take stock of the people that I know, Mm -hmm. first of all, I think my, mm, like the people I can call on that, like I'm in trouble. Sure. I need help. Right. That, that number is way lower. And I don't think that that's what that 150 is. Can't be. Yeah. I, I think that 150 is like people that I interact with coworkers, friends, family, those, those, that immediate. Right. Like we have a relationship. Like right. I can come to you ab- about things or, uh, you know, you at least know who I am kind of thing. At this exact moment, I'd like to know how many phone numbers I have in my phone. Oh, cause it might be, <laughs> nah, I bet it's still way under. 150. You think it's way under 150? I gotta be honest. Like, so like that was my initial take. Okay. I feel like 150 is a huge. big number. Yeah. I don't feel like I hit 150. So, but, but I think like the point of that is at this moment in my life. Sure. Sure. I, I think the point of it is like you, I don't want to say like no 150 people because you, you know over 150 people. Definitely. Yeah. But you, you have a, a meaningful relationship with 150 people. Now, what I mean by like, or what these people mean by meaningful, I think that's where the waters are muddy. Right. Because like, is meaningful like a relationship that you and I have? Right. Where, I mean, you know, that's few and far between, I think in like the larger scope. Sure. Less than 10. Sure. Easily. (laughs) No, exactly. For me, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, And and same, same for me. Like, but that also shifts and morphs too. Right. You know, proximity and, and those kind of things. But do I have 150 people where like, I could ask for help or I could reach out, to. reach out to. And I, I think I do. Okay. Obviously some more than others, as you start to climb that, that 150, you know, number rank, like, Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You start to like, eh, I'm yeah, really you're reaching a bit here. Right. But I feel like yeah, it's going to change like what, whatever the need is. Sure. Like I can't reach out to you for this, but like I might could reach out to you for a ride. Right. You know, but to be fair, me, I'm a, a very gregarious person. Sure. Like I, I can, I mean, we were talking about this off the pod. I can literally walk up to anybody and <laughs> strike up a conversation. Right. Does that mean it's a meaningful relationship or not? I don't know, but I can do that. Right. So I, I think I might be on the upper end of that. Right. Yeah. Definitely the opposite for me. Sure. You know, like, um, uh, if I could put blinders on <laughs> and, and, and walk around with a veil then and, and not have to, yeah. That'd be ideal. Like it'd be fantastic. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, like this is it's so funny when you think about like personality. Like, what would I rather be? Yeah. Like, I have the ability to be that gregarious person, and I am generally a gregarious person. Right. I can make friends with anybody. Yeah. But like, I don't want to. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, I, I think it's like professionalism too. Like, sure. Just because of what you do day to day, right? It forces you. To be that way, sure. I mean, which granted, my job too. I was gonna say, like, but, you did the, kind of the same thing. But I, my, mine is not deeper understand. I'm not with the same person than it's the same people, right? Over and over and over again. Yeah, mine are different people every hour. Sure, you know. So it, there's no. You're not deeper. trying to form meaningful relationships. I'm, I'm having the same ten minute relationship with every single person, mm-hmm. and we both get what we want out of it, and we move on. Move on. But all of that to say, right? I agree with that 150 mark. Okay. You, you mentioned scrolling through the phones. Like, could I legitimately scroll through my phone, and how many people would answer? Sure. You know what I mean? Well, and, and I think you're dead on. I think it does. It's determinant upon the type of person, sure. and the societal structure that we currently exist in. Mm. Like I was the, the other day, just because of the time of year we are drinking fall whiskey. Uh, <laughs> uh, my daughter and I were we were watching uh, Sleepy Hollow. She's a huge Johnny Depp and Tim Burton fan. Yeah. She hadn't seen Sleepy Hollow. We were like, let's watch Sleepy Hollow. Does it, does, I mean, side note, does it hold up? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> it that movie falls apart for one reason, sadly. What was that? 
It's the fact that Christopher Walken is the headless horseman. But that's only like the last couple of minutes. No, nah, it, it that you get you get flashbacks. Oh, really? Throughout. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, you, you're 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 shown quite early on that he's the headless horseman. Interesting. Uh, so you and, and then as you get you know revealed certain aspects of the story, there's flashbacks huh. and things okay. like that. So clearly, I've blocked that out. <laughs> Maybe just, with good it, reason. You know, and I, and I don't know if that was accurate at the time, but. Nowadays, it just takes you out. <laughs> it's like you see this headless horseman of, hey, um, what are you doing with my head? Uh, could I get that back, please? Thank you. <laughs> so it just doesn't. You're just like, oh. So, yeah. And it doesn't work. He's got these like razor sharp teeth. He's yeah. supposed to be German. Yeah. Ah, Christopher Walken doesn't sound German. No. Nah. There's no way. Every time it just takes you out of the story. So that's unfortunate. That's not surprising. <laughs> No, I mean, and, and you know, it's it's one of the darker Tim Burton movies, and it doesn't have a lot of the same Tim Burton quirkiness. Yeah, yeah. Because there, there's no, you know, black and white stripes. Sure. You know, there's no. <laughs> e- everything is kind of more, no Michael Keaton. Yeah, no Michael Keaton. Yeah. Uh, definitely, like he should have been the headless horse. That, that actually probably would have worked. Really made sense. But yeah. So anyway. Anyway, sorry. But I was like, I think because I read this thing about the Dunbar effect, the the night or the morning after watching that. It made me think of like small colonial towns. Sure. And I bet all of those were around that same 150 mark of like, you've got, you've got your, the baker, the blacksmith, yep. the, the barber, you know, I mean, you've got all these things. Absolutely. Like when, when that community comes together back then, it was probably around 150 people. Well, and that's, that's again, whether it was Simon Sinek or, or Malcolm Gladwell, like they make that um, argument is that these small communities, that's what you had. Right. You, you had, had somebody that was like good at all these different things right, to make it all work. Right. You know, you had a, a leader who basically was the person who could just rally these people together. Right. You had, you know, each person who was good at the thing. You know, you had, I need help with this. I can go to this person. Right. And that's what the the Dunbar effect, I think, is, is kind of harping upon is that after that 150, like that doesn't mean that you don't know who these people are because like I mean I feel like I could name over 150 people, but that doesn't mean like I have a relationship with 150 people right. or over that. Right. But the the idea is that if I were to go to that individual, things could get done. Like we we could figure things out. Right. With without the formality of like uh, who are you, what's going, you know what I mean. Well, and that was a bit of the, the the movie too. Was like there's a point in it where they show like a family tree. Sure. And like every family is connected to this other family because right. they all live in the same community, so they they're all connected, you know, through marriage in one way or another. Yeah. And so it is kind of like, oh yeah, I do know you because like you're what's his name's brother, yep. and you're married to her sister, like it, so it's all just. And that makes sense to me. Mm-hmm. Very like, small town kind of idea. Right. Right. And then, but then when you look at it in a contemporary context of like 150 people, man, like there's just like, I think of the coworkers that I work with that I would consider part of my social group. Mm-hmm. And then I look at friends and then I look at family that I, again, that I would consider like part of my social group. That number for me just seems Doodles. outrageous. Yeah. You know, I, I think, <laughs> but I think it's just the time that we live in. And, and that right there is why I think this is interesting. Had this Agreed. been, you know, 50, maybe even 25 years ago, we're having the same conversation, 150 would make sense. Right. Agreed. But now in the larger perspective, when you think about like, you know, we have as a podcast, um, let's say across all social media, we have, I don't know. 15,000 followers. Right. Let's be honest. We don't know. That's low ball. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Fair enough. Fair enough. We, we, we don't know 15,000 people. Right. In that way. Right. Like that, that's cool. And, and we, we love you guys. And we love like, you know, obviously we have a, a cool reach and there's, there's a community behind it, but we also are not kidding ourselves that we have a relationship with all 15,000 of those people. Well, and, that, and that's, you know, Facebook, I think is the only thing that still utilizes the word friends. Yeah. You know, I think everything else has gone to followers. Right. And I think that's because Facebook originally was like a connection to connection type of a thing of both of us have agreed that we are friends. And so it was a combined thing where Instagram, I can, I can go out and follow 
anybody on Instagram. Sure. And then sometimes it, it does take your approval, but to get to the approval for me to be able to follow you, you don't have to follow me back. Right. So it, it is still more of a, I think that shows more the reality of the situation. Correct. Of like, it's not, we are friends and right. this is not my social group. It's just, I find this thing interesting. Yeah. And, and th- that's exactly it. I, I think that you hit the nail on the head that, um, you know, the purpose of like something like Facebook was connection. The pur- purpose of something like Instagram is I find this thing interesting and I want to follow that thing. Sure. And not that, not that there can't be connections via Instagram or, or Twitter or whatever, because we've made them. Right. I mean, we, we have people that uh, now <laughs> that we, reached out. Yeah. That we can across the world in that friend group. Yeah. But that's few and far between. Right. I don't know. Like the, the whole thing is, is super interesting when you think about, how these meaningful connections are morphing. Right. And what that's doing. I know. Yeah. Like, I think it's really interesting. If I, if I go back to like my high school era, right. 150 seems accurate. Mm-hmm. Cause it was like everybody on that sports team. Yeah. Yeah. I knew all those guys, everybody that was in you know, like, you know, homeroom. Yeah. No, I knew everybody there. Uh, everybody that was in, this social group that I was in. Right. I was connected to all those people. Everybody in my family. Like, I was way more connected to like members of my family back then. Uh, but now we've all grown up and, and we do different things. I think I look back at that era in an era before social media. Yep. And that number makes a lot more sense where it doesn't now for whatever reason. And I think it's because we we have this illusion that we're more connected when ultimately ugh, maybe we're more lonely. Whoa. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) You went really Oprah there. uh, Sorry. I apologize. Uh, No, I think it's, I think it's more of back then to, to have that connection with that person. It required more effort. It's like, it's like the whole thing of like the, like a handwritten letter as opposed to a text or something like that. If I was going to go hang out with my group, I had to go and be present at the football game there was or whatever orchest- orchestration behind yeah. that thing. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, ha- we all had to go meet up at the bowling alley. Whereas now it's like bowling alley, huh? Oh man. So much. <laughs> we got to do a bowling episode. Um, <clears throat> whereas nowadays it's like, if I want to, like I, I have a, uh, a friend that I would still consider part of my one fifty. Yeah. That I haven't talked to him in four or five years, Sure, but I'm still, I'm connected to him on, social media. Yeah. I'm connected to his wife on social media. Uh, I just saw pictures of his youngest kids first day of school. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm still kind of connected to him. Right. Because I get these brief glimpses into his life. And that's where I go back without Facebook and without that. Right. I would probably feel the absence that right now I'm not feeling because I I still get those glimpses. And, And that's, that's where I go back to that kind of illusion of like, you just mentioned, right? You're not actually connected to that person, right? And that, that's what social media, I think, actually does a very good job at is providing us that perspective of, no, like I haven't talked to this person X amount of years, but we're still connected, right? I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just like, but that's not a connection, right? In, in this, in the same way, it is. Let me rephrase. It is a connection. It's not a connection in the same meaningful way, right? And and that's where like. I then kind of consider that 150. Again, 25, 30 years ago, that 150 number seems right. right. Now, I don't know. Yeah. And and it would be interesting to see like new studies revamping that Dunbar idea of like, is it still the same now? Now when when your average person can have, you know, 350 quote unquote friends, right. what does that actually do? Like, do they think that no, these people are actually friends? Right. When like if you post something and you get like 12 likes right and, like, and you know or people are commenting on things i just imagine like now like a college kid that that just got into a sorority or fraternity sure and it's like no I, now i immediately have all of these friends so i immediately have to now update and and go and find and friend oh. and connect all these people on social media like that that must be exhausting can i can i just say like i'm glad i'm not in that stage of yeah, life yeah yeah on that note Really quick, I've got this like mental idea of like what the connection is now. Where I think back then, I think what the what the implication was is that you had 150 relationships that were 
tied together with, let's say, a chain. Sure. Hard to unbreak. Whereas now it might be more like we have 50. We might have 50 chains, but now it's it's supplanted with a uh, 100 shoelaces that are tied with bow ties. Sure. You know, it, it's that kind of a thing of like, it's not... I like this metaphor. It's a similar connection strength, but a lot of them will break easily. You know, if there's pressure applied and you're going to still have those 50 that are like, yeah, I got you and I'm there for you. That's just kind of, that's just kind of what it feels like to me. I, I, I'm at this there. Point, at this I'm point there. in time. I'm there. Yeah. Like it, it's, again, it goes back to like, what do we consider meaningful? What yeah. do we consider a meaningful relationship? Right. If I consider a meaningful relationship, like... I need your help. It is 3 a.m. And, you know, I might have to call you a couple of times just to wake your ass up, but like you're going to be there. Right. That number is is slim. Right. Is it, hey, I can call you and like, hey, you want to go see a movie? That number is a little bit bigger. Right. You're like, hey, we're getting some friends together. You want to go, you know, camping? Maybe a little bit bigger. So like what defines meaningful relationship? I think that's where the line yeah, starts that, to that's become. That's the minutia. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in how that number's developed for me personally and what that means for a larger perspective. Totally. Yeah. You got anything else? Nah, that was good shit. Yeah. That was a good one. I love things like that. Like yeah. the, these ideas have kind of been around for a little while and then like what are their application to us now? Good whiskey. Good conversation. I agree. Trust it. Yeah. Well, we'd love to know what do you think about the Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend, and specifically, Batch 108. The Great Pumpkin. Ooh. Have you had it? Yeah. Can I just say, like, that needs to be featured a little more prominently on the bottle. I agree. I don't know if they have canisters. I've never seen a Joseph Magnus I don't in think a canister so. or a I don't box think so. or anything like that. To be fair, like, that's that's more of a scotch thing. The canisters are, for sure. Yeah. Although, I mean, I've, I've gotten, like, wild turkey products eh, out of good a canister. Point, good point, good yeah. point, um, but boxes are kind of more the the bourbon, the American yeah equivalent. Sure. Uh, but yeah, agreed. Like there there should be more of that, more access to it. Of like even just like a little sticker on the side of like go know, go visit find us here. This. Yeah, to, exactly. To understand more. Yeah. yeah. Kind of a thing. We also want to know what do you think about the Dunbar effect? Yeah. Does does that one fifty number does that make sense to you in your current state or right. maybe for you it's way more. You know, That's, maybe you've got 300 solid connections. You know, I'd be interested to hear from our younger listeners. Yeah. You know, kind of in that, like, totally. you know, 20 something range of like, what does that mean to you? Because obviously their perspective is dramatically different than ours. No, I totally agree. Like, I think younger people, and I think it is just like an individual thing. Oh, like for yeah. me, maybe it is more like 50. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for anybody else, it may be like, 200 250 who right knows? and I, I think you're right like it's also like what do you do and where are you in life yeah yeah well you can get in touch with us through email that's drep and stone at gmail.com you can also get in touch with us through social media it's always one word drep and stone d-r-e-p and stone you come do your social media wherever you like to do it with your 150 friends <laughs> you find us and our 150 friends and yeah. we all get together and we have a big huge 300 person party i like your quick math there yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff on social media right now. Uh, we're, we're doing a, a couple little um, uh, series, if you will. A little bit of uh, whiskey terms to know. There you go. We might expand that a little bit further. Just, mm. you know, things things that we're trying, things that we're interested in. You know, a lot, a lot of good things going on. Yeah, for sure. You can support the podcast by rating Drep and Stone wherever it is you find great podcasts like this one. Yeah. You can also support the podcast via our Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash Drep and Stone. Get some yep. kind of behind the scenes picks, um, some episode notes things of that nature just you know helps keep the recording machine recording the fans working yeah. and the lights on that's where we put the spicy content <laughs> sure <laughs> the the after we hit not record button yeah, yeah. If nobody's ever noticed the fact that like that's how we keep the fans running <laughs> <laughs> You just thought of that on the only fly. Only the fans. That's all we ever mention is the only, only the fans. That's, we only yeah. mention the fans. Got it. Yeah. yeah. On, oh, that's a good Patreon. point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and finally, you can support the podcast by telling someone about Drep and Stone. You're, uh, you're on the social medias. Yep. Or maybe you're actually out with friends. Yeah. Because you're, you're communicating with your uh, exactly. 758 friends. Ooh. On Facebook, and you right. and you you share a little thing. Sure, yeah, like, you know? it's it's real simple. Yeah, you totally. just you hit that share you button. Gotta let them know. Yeah, or you're hanging out with your your group of close friends. Yeah, just two or three. Yeah, and you're like, hey, you know, I'm really interested in this podcast. They talk about whiskey. They talk about pop culture, philosophy. Sometimes they talk about a lot of cool things. Totally. They do interviews with really cool people. Indeed. Um, have you heard about them? 
and your friend group is going to be like, yeah, you talk about them all the time. And we actually, we listen too. Yeah. And now because you're having, of you. Exactly. And you develop that deeper friendship. And now you're having a great conversation Man, about Kevin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But then that table next to you, because you're, you know, right. you're out with your friends. Right. You're having hear, some drinks. You're a little loud. Exactly. They yeah. hear how excited you are. Yeah. And then you like. They lean in. What, what, what was the name of that podcast? Because like y'all seem really jazzed about it. Yeah. It's it's called Drep and Stone. D-R-E-P wow. and Stone. Man, what a unique name. I know. It's a lot of fun. Um, they know a lot about whiskey. Bunch of nerds. Whiskey nerds. Yeah. But they know a lot about a lot of things. So yeah. You should check it out. Yeah. How do, how do I find that? Uh, internet. Oh, <laughs> like everything else. Yeah. Yeah. How do I search it? Uh, you, you type in Drep and Stone. What is that? It's D-R-E-P and Stone. But oh. It's all one word. Oh, okay. Um, well, it is on social could, media. You could, you could probably also put spaces in. If yeah. You want to do, and it, it'd probably get you there. Cause it'll, it, it'll again, figure it out. It's a unique name. Yeah. Yeah. It'll figure, it'll figure it all out. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Or they're going to lean in and say, well, what's the name of that podcast? And you're like, it was Drep and Stone. And they're going to be like, oh, duh. Yeah. No. Yeah. You're right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. And, and if you're really in the know, you'll just slide them that uh, QR code because you're one of those people like we are. Where, where is the QR code? <laughs> it's on the cards that we made. I'm not that person. <laughs> oh, I do it all the fucking time. Yeah. Oh, dude. All Man, the time. Yeah. You're a player. I know. Anyway. Anyway. On that note. Yep. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. May your glass overflow. And your ass never show. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. That's the question that everyone wants to know. Is that the segue? <laughs> no. Uh, Speaking of things that work, can I drink something now? <laughs> I'm uh, on the clock. Okay. <laughs> I, could, I was looking at it. I was like, shit. <laughs> it's some tough plastic yeah, stuff. Uh, well, it goes all the way fucking down. You got problems, and those problems last for a lifetime. Yeah. Ooh, I got some sludgy bits down here in the bottom. I was in Dignity in college. It had to do with barbecue. I can't, you know, I'll tell you that story. We have an internship. Yeah. Got a little bit of money, but I ain't got that money. Not, not that kind of thing. Not that kind of thing. I don't know. If I sold, if we sold all three houses. You forgot the other part. We've both quit our jobs. Yeah. And this is what we're doing. Yeah. What are you doing? Uh, We're tasting whiskey all day. You'll be best friends with Booker No in no time. Hey, everybody. <laughs> you th- Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you threw me off. <laughs> That's what I thought you said. Yeah. Yeah. You do you, bud. You haven't? A little bit better than the toothpaste bullshit. <laughs> Hey, we don't ever know. Yeah. You, know you never know until you, you, never you know, get into it. Camera is too hot.